We're now going to look at a proof technique called strong induction. Now remember, in your usual induction setup, you'd like to prove for all n p of n. And the first step is to prove the base case. The second step is to prove that for all n, p of n implies p of n plus 1. And usually, the first step of the proof is, you know, assume p of n is true, and then conclude p of n plus 1 is true. Fine. Now, in strong induction, you make the following step, which I'll call, you know, star 3, or it's an alternate third step here. Instead of assuming p of n is true, you assume that p of 1, p of 2, p of 3, and so on and so forth, all up through p of n, are all true. And then again, as before, you want to conclude p of n plus 1. So it's like I'm making things easier on you. Previously, we were doing these inductive proofs where you always assumed that p of n was true, and you wanted to show that that implied p of n plus 1 is true. It turns out, I'm telling you, that it's legal to assume that not only is p of n true, but also p of n minus 1 is true, p of n minus 2 is true, p of 3 is true, so on and so forth, p of 2, p of 1, all the way down back through whatever your base case is. So I guess the summary is in strong induction, you, you can assume that the base case is true. I mean, some, usually it's p of 1, but maybe it's, let's, I'll just call it p of little b, maybe it's p of 10, wherever you're going to start, and p of b plus 1, and and so forth, and p of n, and then you want to show that this implies p of n plus 1. So I guess there should be a for all n here. So I'm giving you more power. I'm making things easier on you. Uh, you get to assume not only that p of n implies p of n plus 1, but you get to assume not only is p of n true, you get to assume that all of these other predicates all the way down to your base case are also true. And then you want to show that all of that, you know, assuming all of these are true, you want to show that you can prove that p of n plus 1 is true. So it should be easier because I'm allowing you to assume not just p of n is true, but also all of these other things. And we'll see some examples now where uh, assuming that these other things are true does make the problem easier. So let me give an example. Uh, of strong induction using a game, a game of matches. I'll call it the matchstick game. So in this game, there are two piles of matches. Pile one, pile two. And they there are initially, say, k matches in pile one and the same number of matches in pile 2. And there are two players. And the player who picks the last matchstick wins. So player who takes the last matchstick wins. And the play proceeds as follows. So the first player chooses a pile, and then say pile number one, and then picks as many matches out of this pile as that player would like. Um, it, it always has to be some non-zero number. And then player two, after so after player one has picked some number of matches from either pile one or pile two, but not from both, player two does the same thing picks a pile, either pile 2 or pile 1, 
and pick some number of matches from either pile one or pile two. The point is, you can only pick matches from one pile at a time. So, uh, each player only picks matches from one pile at a time. Okay, and the claim is that player two can always force a win. So let me give you a little example. If pile one has just one matchstick, and pile two has one matchstick, then if player one picks this matchstick, player two is going to win because he'll take the other matchstick. And if player one takes this matchstick, then player two will take this remaining matchstick and player two will win. Okay. So what we just proved is that for uh, games with two piles, uh, each of one matchstick, player two always wins. Okay, so we want to prove the, the claim that player two can always force a win. We want to prove that by induction. So the first thing we should do is write a predicate. So let's say uh, P of N is that if each pile has n matchsticks, player two can always win. OK, so here's our predicate. We want to prove that for all n, p of n is true. You know, if the game starts with 100 matches in each pile or 200 matches in each pile, um, you know, this is what we'd like to prove. The, the game always starts with two piles of the same number of matchsticks, and so we'd like to prove that if each pile has n matchsticks, player two can always uh, force a win. So what, what did we just prove? Well, we just proved the base case. We proved that p of 1 is true. Okay, we did that simple case up here. So now we want to prove that for all n, p of n implies p of n plus 1. Except, remember, we're using strong induction, or now we know about strong induction. So, in fact, we can actually just uh, assume that p of 1 is true, p of 2, all the way up through p of n, and we want to show this implies p of n plus 1. Okay, so let's move this up. So here we are, we have, you know, we want to prove, let's say step one, want to prove P of n plus one. What does P of n plus one say? It says that if you have a game where pile one has n plus 1 matchsticks, and pile 2 has n plus 1 matchsticks, then player 2 can force a win. That's p of n plus 1. So p of n plus 1 says p2 wins uh, in this game below. And we need to prove that. What can we use? We can use the fact that in a game where there's one matchstick in each pile, player two can force a win. In a game where there's two matchsticks in each pile, player two can force a win. Three matchsticks in each pile, player two can win. And so on and so forth up through P of N. Okay. So, step two is, so player one is going to remove, say, I don't know, K matches. 
right? And player one is going to remove k matches from either pile one or pile two. So let's say case one. P1 removes from pile one. Okay, how many matches are now left in pile one? Well, n minus k matches are left in pile one. So let's just we'll say that you know player one wipes out some k of these matches, and there are now n minus k. Excuse me, there are now n plus one minus k matches left in pile one. There were n plus one matches. Player one removed k. Now there are n plus one minus k matches left. So what will player two do? This is step two. Player two also removes k matches from pile two. So if player one removed k matches from pile one, then player two is going to remove k matches from pile two. So that leaves n plus one minus k matches in pile two. Now it's player one's turn again, right? But look at the situation. We now have pile one. It has n plus one minus k matches left. And pile two has n plus one minus k matches left. But in this game, we know by the strong inductive hypothesis that player two is going to win. So over here, I'll, I'll write this implies that P2 can win because P of n plus 1 minus k is true. Right? So if, if k was 10, then we'd be using P of n plus 1 minus 10. That's P of n minus 9. Right? So uh, if k is 1, if, if player 1 just took one match, then we're, we're saying, well, it's because P of n is true. If k is 2, it's because p of n minus 1 is true. If k is 3, it's because p of n minus 2 is true. So, you know, uh, we're using the fact that we've assumed that uh, p of 1, p of 2, p of 3, p of, and so on and so forth, up through p of n, are all true simultaneously. So we've taken the game back to a situation where we can imply the inductive hypothesis. So um, again, we started with n plus 1 matches in each pile. Player 1 removed k. So player 2 mimicked that move. And then you can apply the inductive hypothesis to assume that in this new game, player 2 can still force a win. Now you might say, well, what if in the very first step, player 1 had removed k matches from pile 2? Well, it's the same case. Then player 2 would remove k, k matches from pile 1. And we apply the same inductive hypothesis. So this completes the inductive step and it completes the proof. Now if you're writing in a proof like this, um, I'm only writing it this way because I'm running out of space. So presumably you would just keep moving down the page and you wouldn't uh, have this sort of scrawl here. I apologize. 